Today's lesson is actually a recap of what we talked about recently on how to avoid being hurt by means of using the danger zone quite clearly. The day before yesterday, I received a couple emails from a few coaches who said that I have made a big error with what I was saying when I spoke on the subject of the danger zone. However, feel free to email me if you want. Go to drunkinsoccer.com, join and be a member, and by all means, send an email. To prove to you, coaches who are out there, that this simple indoor lecture or classes on drunken soccer doctrine will prove to you how easy it is for you to avoid being hurt. Let us begin. Today's apparatus, as usual, a soccer ball, a Pepsi can, a box, and a bottle. Notice there are lines on the ground. This line, as in previous lecture on the subject of the danger zone, notice a line that runs straight through the center. This line represents our center line zone. The zone that I've made clear in most of our lectures previously on how to get your opponents off balance and taking them off their center line. In the corner, as usual, we have my drunken soccer fainting manual, uh, the art of soccer deception, and here I have a free soccer trick soccer report. Where members who join drunken soccer will receive this as a free gift to them as a member of drunken soccer. Let us begin. In previous class, I remember where I distinctly say that this area, this line represents our danger zone. This small area in between, this is where the controversy with the coaches stands. When I made mention that this small area represents our safe area. I will prove to you why it is our safe area, even though this area right here represents our safe area, behind the zero danger zone. Let's pause for a minute and I'll take you to some of Drunken Soccer's secret theories. We are back to our typical standing position where you are standing and the soccer ball is directly beneath you, between your legs. Let me roll the ball along to the danger zone line. The danger zone is this line that runs parallel to the soccer ball. The center line, the line that we have discussed in previous lectures, the line that runs straight through the center. Notice that there's an also an imaginary line cuts across the soccer ball. Notice the center line as it rolls straight up between these two objects, the bottle and the box. Those two objects represent stationary legs of your opponents. Let me elaborate, and this Pepsi can represent a point in which I will prove to you that this area is also our safe area and also prove to those coaches who have sent me those emails to say to them that they do know what they're talking about but they don't know what drunken soccer is talking about and I'm also going to prove to them that this small area here that the area which they say is the safe area yes it is but here also is a safe area. Let us begin our reasoning. At this moment, I am your opponent. I'm reaching out for the soccer ball. Let me roll the ball over there. Notice my stance. The very minute my leg reaches off the ground, don't you have a split second to move? 
Ah, let me say it again to you. The very minute my leg leaves the ground, don't you have a split second to move? Yes, you do. Let me move the can across that you see what I'm talking about. Right here will be perfect. The very minute I raise my leg off the ground to reach for this soccer ball, you have a split second to move. That's one safe area for you also, coaches. The very minute the soccer ball rolls across here, I reach my leg out for you, and you come across this diagonal, aren't you in the safe zone again? Yes, you are. Because if I try to move this leg that is off the ground, I'm gonna fall. I'm sorry. So here also is a safe zone. The very minute I